Our, our next guest is the CEO of the most valuable company in the world, uh, uh, on its way to perhaps becoming the first trillion dollar value company. Uh, he is Apple CEO Tim Cook, and he's going to be interviewed by Fortune Executive Editor Adam Lashinsky. Please welcome them. Thank you, Alan. And uh, welcome, Tim. Thank you. It's great uh, to be here. I'm, I'm so pleased personally th that you're here uh, helping us make history in Guangzhou. Uh, Alan, if we didn't mention any company that Apple has a competitive relationship with, we wouldn't have much to talk about. We couldn't mention any company during our, during our chat. Uh, I know you've been here all, all week, so we have, we have yeah. a lot of exciting things to talk about, but I wanted to start by, by looking back. Apple has a rich history with China, and you have a rich history with China because you've been traveling here a long time. Could you share a thought on that and also reflect on what has changed? Yeah, probably, I came to China for the first time in maybe a quarter century ago. So uh, that's the reason my hair is gray by now. And it, it's just been a sea change. I mean, you think about it now, the, some of the most modern cities in the world are in China. Uh, in, in the mid-90s, you wouldn't find any modern cities of the world here. Um, the infrastructure that has gone on in China, whether you, you, you know it from the moment you land in the airport uh, to the roads, uh, it's just extraordinary. Uh, the most modern in the world, arguably. Um, I, I think the other thing that you, you feel is that over that period of time, uh, there's a lot more openness uh, than there was in, in, in the mid-90s. Uh, may, maybe not where uh, we'd all like to be, but, but it's come an extraordinary uh, a distance. Also, uh, China at that time was, uh, at least from, from our point of view, was focused mainly in China. Now China plays a uh, leadership position for the world in, in uh, many different areas, and so it's, I mean, it's like a different country. Uh, if you were to come in when I did and you went to sleep for the 25 years <laughs> and you were parachuted back in, it would be unrecognizable. If, if, as if you were a, a, a supply chain Rip Van Winkle. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, let's let's plunge into uh, talking yep. about Apple's Apple's business in in China. Tim, perhaps give give everybody a, a quick overview of the many things that Apple does here. Yeah, it's a, uh, extraordinarily. China has extraordinary skills, and uh, so what probably the part that is the most unknown is there's almost two million application developers in China. <laughs> that write apps for the iOS uh, app store. And uh, these are some of the, the most innovative uh, mobile apps in the world, and the, the entrepreneurs that run them are some of the most in, uh, inspiring and entrepreneurial in the world. Those are sold not only here, but exported around the world. Uh, also in the manufacturing space, uh, China has moved into very advanced manufacturing, and so you, you find in China the sort of the intersection of craftsman kind of skill uh, and uh, sophisticated robotics and, and uh, sort of the computer science world, that intersection, which is very, very rare to find anywhere, that, that kind of skill. Uh, which, which is very important for our business because of the precision and quality level that, uh, that, that we like. And then, of course, the thing that most people focus on when they, if they're, if they're a foreigner uh, coming to China is they focus on the market itself and the size market. And obviously, it's the biggest market in the world in so many different areas. Um, but for us, the, the uh, Number one attraction is the quality of people, and uh, and uh, we, so we've had an extraordinary relationship over uh, three decades, really. Let's come back to the manufacturing and how yep. it's changed. I think most people think of uh, China's importance to Apple that uh, Apple 
has been manufacturing, designing in California, manufacturing in China for many years. You were central to this strategy at Apple in your, er, way before, before you were CEO. Uh, and so the notion is Apple designed these things, they sent them over, China made them. It's an antiquated picture, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not designed and then sent over. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that sounds like there's not interaction. Mm -hmm. the, the truth is the um, process engineering and process development associated with our products are, uh, require innovation in, in and of itself not only the product but the way that it's made uh, because we want to make things in the scale of hundreds of millions and we want the quality level of, of zero defect, right? That's always what we thrive for. And the way that you get there, particularly when you're pushing the envelope on the type of materials that you have and the precision that you're, you're the precision of the specifications that you're forcing, uh, requires a hand in glove kind of partnership. You, you don't do it by throwing it over the chasm. It would never work. I, I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine how that would be. I don't want to imagine how. <laughs> um, I know you visited a, a manufacturing partner this week. Could you tell yeah. everybody about it? And it's yeah. not, by the way, uh, later in the afternoon, I'm interviewing mm -hmm. Terry Guo of, of Foxconn. Yeah. That's not who you visited this week, right? No, no, no. I visited uh, a couple of different partners. I visited ICT. And uh, for those of you that haven't heard of ICT, uh, they manufacture, among other things, the AirPods for us. And uh, when you think about AirPods as a user, you might think, oh, this couldn't be that hard, it's really small. The AirPods have several hundred components in them. And the level of precision embedded to get the audio quality without getting into uh, really uh, nerdy engineering, uh, it's really hard. And it requires a level of skill that is you know, extremely high. And we, we met ACT, uh, our ICT, uh, back many years ago. They, they started making cables for us. Uh, uh, Grace Wu, who is, uh, owns the company, uh, started her career working for Han Hai on the production line. And so this is an incredible. She was a, fac a factory worker. She was a worker. factory worker. Extraordinary. This is an uh, this is an incredible uh, example of the Chinese dream being realized. <laughs> now she owns a multi-billion-dollar company that does unbelievable quality work. And I'm not doing an advertisement for them. Uh, <laughs> You've just done a very good one. But uh, <laughs> but but yeah, uh, she's. You know, unbelievable, really. And uh, so I, I toured that. And the, the thing that I, I love, obviously, the quality and the work that, that they do. But the other thing they do is uh, she believes, she, has, she shares our view on how you treat people. And so if you were to go there and talk to uh, a lot of the line workers, which we do often, you would find some of the happiest people in the world there because they're treated so well. And uh, that's very important to us in, in uh, how, how we present ourselves. And, uh, and I have to compliment her on, on, on doing that. I also I went to a, a company this morning uh, that, that works on the front-facing camera for us. Here in Guangzhou. Uh, here in Guangzhou. And uh, again, highly technical, highly precise, uh, advanced manufacturing uh, in, in the, it's the skill here is just incredible. On that point, give us an update. I, I think it was about two years ago you, uh, you said publicly um, wh when you were asked, why do you do so much manufacturing in China? You, yeah. you said, we'd love to do it other places, i.e. the United States, but the, the sheer volume of engineers in China is greater than any other place we might discuss. Is that basically still the case? Yeah, there, there's a mis, there's a confusion about China that, uh, and let me at least give you my opinion. The, the popular conception is that companies come to China because of low labor cost. I'm not sure uh, what part of China they go to, but the truth is China stopped being the low labor cost country many years ago 
And th that is not the reason to come to China from a supply point of view. The reason is because of the skill and the, the quantity of skill in one location and the type of skill it is. Like um, the products we do require really advanced tooling and the, the precision that you have to have in tooling and working with the materials that we do are state of the art. And the tooling skill is very deep here. You know, in, in the US you could have a meeting of tooling engineers and I'm not sure we could fill the room. In China you could fill multiple football fields. It's that vocational, vocational expertise is very deep very, very deep here. And I, and I give the, uh, the education system a lot of credit for continuing to push on that even when others were de-emphasizing vocational. Now I think many countries in the world have woke up and said, you know, this is a key thing and we've got to correct that. But China called that right from the beginning. Let's shift from the supply chain to your, yep. to your commercial business. This is yep. a fiercely competitive yeah. market in every way. To, uh, how, how, is the, how is the iPhone doing uh, against the competition, which is good, right? The, the competition here is fierce. It is, uh, we're, we, of course, we've been battling competition for our lives. You know, we uh, competed against a monopolist with Microsoft for, uh, and still do. Uh, and, and so competing against strong competitors is not new for, for Apple. Uh, you know, we focus on innovation and believe that if we make the best products, then we can convince enough people to buy them that we can have an okay business. Um, we've, never, we've never had an objective to make the most. And in, in if, uh, very few times in the history of the world does the best and the most line up. Hmm. Sometimes those two things intersect, but Apple is always focused on best. And if we happen to make most, then that's okay, but it's not the, it's not the high order bit for us. It's not even on the, on the list. And so if you look at how iPhone X is doing here, I could not be happier. Um, uh, we had a few quarters of negative growth on a year-over-year -year basis. We returned to double-digit growth last quarter, uh, even before the iPhone X ship. You're talking about Greater China now. I'm talking about Greater China. Yep. Uh, but, but mainland China would look even better mm -hmm. uh, because the, in Greater China you have Hong Kong, and Hong Kong has been pressured uh, for, for some period of time. And uh, so it feels really great. Um, and, and, you know, we, we love being here. As you know, uh, Pony Ma, the CEO and co-founder of, of Tencent is coming on a, a after yep. you. There, are, there are several people have suggested that WeChat is so important for all smartphones in China that it's mm -hmm. more important than, uh, than the operating system. And therefore that presents a, a long-term challenge, or I don't know, a medium-term challenge to Apple. Mm -hmm. I see WeChat uh, or, or Tencent as a great partner. Okay, and uh, so I probably have a different view than the than the popular view, and think very highly of Pony, uh, in particular. For us, think about it from our point of view: is we have uh, give or take 15% share in the smartphone market in China. So that means there's 85% that's, that somebody else is selling. The truth is, if it's easy to switch, who's gonna benefit from that equation? And, and guess what? If you looked at switchers from the Android system to iOS in, in China, it's always a multiple of people doing the other way. And, and so I, I think if anything, uh, it, uh, the, the uh, Tencent's ubiquity in China plays to our advantage. Because, because WeChat works, on the, works just fine on the iPhone? Because it works great on the iPhone and because you can leave Android mm -hmm. and go to the iOS ecosystem without losing all of the things that you built up in the, the uh, Android ecosystem, right? And we think that if people try iPhone and begin to use it, the likelihood of people leaving uh, is low. You know, who would want to have a worse experience? 
you know. <laughs> and, 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 and so we're clear, your definition of a worse experience is some phone other than an iPhone, correct? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <that's> yeah. <laughs> and, and I would say that about um, uh, Mac and Windows as well, yeah. just, just to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Um, you've had a very busy week. You started, yeah. your, you started your week here in China at, at, the, at the Internet Conference in Wuhan. Yeah. I, I want to uh, quickly read a, a quote from the speech that you gave there. You said, yeah. I believe in our capacity to make this world work for everyone, not because of technology itself, but because of the ways we choose to use it. We all have to work to infuse technology with humanity, you said. Yeah. What did, what, did you, what did you mean by that? What were you trying to get at with the, with the word mean, humanity? Well, for Apple has always stood at the intersection of technology and the liberal arts and the humanities. And so what does that mean, really? It, it means that we try to put the user uh, the center of everything we do. And so we're trying to make the user experience great. That's sort of, that is our focus. And we think a lot about the consequences or what our products can be used for that are not good. And we try our best to come up with ways to diminish the things that aren't good and amplify the things that are. What's some examples of that? Um, I mean, take um, uh, texting while driving. This is an awful thing. You know, no one should do that. Uh, so what we did in the latest uh, iOS 11 is your phone is going to shut down notifications and messages while you're driving. And you're going to have to, uh, you, you, you can override it if you wish, but we're trying to give people a tool to do the right thing. Uh, another example, uh, f for years, and we've been criticized for this uh, quite a bit in some cases, for years since the beginning of the App Store, we've always curated what was in the store. Why we've done this is because we felt as a platform owner, we had a responsibility to make sure terrorist kind of content didn't get in the app store and hate speech didn't get there and pornography and all these things that you'd never want your kids looking at. And so we've, we've had that review from the beginning. And, and so we tr really try to think about the consequences of the products we create the downstream things, and, and, and I think that it is increasingly important in a world where technology can now do virtually anything or is on a path to do anything. And, and can be used that for negative It can purposes. be used for negative purposes, and it's important that the creators put humanity at the center of their creations. And so it's, it's the perfect segue to the, you, you Apple's yeah. criticized for everything, by the way, at, yeah. at, at, at some I get, point. I get criticized for breathing. <laughs> that one I haven't heard. The, but uh, the territory. But in the West, there was criticism of, of your having yeah. shown up at, at Wujin at all, because some people feel that it was an endorsement of the government's um, internet policies, otherwise known as you know, the censorship, et cetera. Your reaction to that criticism? Well, I, I never base, I don't know how you guys do this, but I, I never base um, my actions on a poll of how people are going to feel about it and whether I'm going to take any criticism. If I did, I'd never do anything, honestly. Uh, I also, if you were to come to my office, in addition to uh, a couple of photos or so of heroes, you would see this huge wooden uh, plaque with the uh, inscription in it of the in the arena quote from President Roosevelt. And I have always felt like this. You, the, the thing that's missing in our society uh, is there's not enough people that want to listen and understand and participate. They have a litmus test of uh, do I agree with every single thing that person uh, believes? And if not, I don't want to talk to them and they're a bad person. I've never seen the world that way. And, and, um, and so I, I know I'll get criticized for going to any meeting. <laughs> I get criticized for going to meetings in the United States. Yeah. And uh, I don't really care. 
<laughs> at the end of the day, because it is the right thing to do to participate and to find those areas that are common that you can work on together. Um, China's done an unbelievable job of lifting people out of poverty. They've done an incredible job, I mean, far beyond uh, what any country has done. We were talking about 19, mid-90s to today. The biggest change is the number of people that have been pulled out of poverty, by far. And we should all applaud that. And we should all feel good about it. And so there are, in, in the environmental leadership today is very clear and it aligns completely with Apple's values. The, the Chinese uh, the uh, environmental Chi leadership, yes, the government. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're very fixated on, on uh, doing the right things to avert climate change. And this is something that means a lot to us as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And so what, what we always try to do is find the areas where you can work together, find the areas of commonality, and then the things that you disagree with, take time to understand how somebody sees it. And if I'm gonna get criticized for that, then so be it. Well, and I think, yeah. you, have a, I think you have a room full of people who would yeah. agree with the philosophy of listen, understand, and participate. That's yeah. why everybody's here today. Yeah. Um, there, there are specific policies that, that you have to navigate though. So for example, yeah. if, if something like, for example, Skype is yeah. pulled out of the app store yeah. or VPN software, how do you approach that as CEO? Well, when you, when you go into a country and participate in the market, you are subject to the laws and regulations of that country. You, you don't bring the laws and regulations that you wish were there, that you want to be there. You, you have the laws and regulations of that country. And so from, from my American mindset, I, I believe strongly in freedoms. They're at the core of what an American is. And I have no confusion on that. Uh, and I think anybody that knows me knows how I, I view those things. Uh, but I also know that each country in the world decides their laws and their regulations. And, if you, and so your, your choice is, do you participate? Or do you stand on the sideline and yell at how things should be? And my own view very strongly is you show up and you participate. You get in the arena because nothing ever changes from the sideline. You know, nothing ever changes from there. And, uh, and so uh, my hope over time is that uh, some of these uh, things, uh, the couple things that have been pulled, uh, come back. I have great hope on that and great optimism on that. Are you optimistic because of any conversations you've had this week? Well, in China? I, you know, I don't want to give, I, I don't want to reveal any kind of personal conversations and so confidential conversations. But I'm just saying that, that I, I look at things maybe a bit differently. Uh, than most. I, I have this 25 year view of China. Yeah. So I've seen so much change in that quarter of a century. And to me, the arc of that is clear. Yep. Now, it doesn't mean that it's a straight line, but honestly speaking, in no country in the world is progress a straight line, right? It's, yeah. It, we, it, that would include the United States for sure. I would, I would love to take your questions with the time we have left. Please raise your hand, we'll, we'll bring a mic to you. There's one right here, and the mic is coming to you very quickly. Please identify yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Aaron Yu, uh, Mr. Cook, and uh, I'm representing Store Ansel, which is a Nordic company, and I'm heading their China operation here. In fact, we are playing a role in China in your global supply chain, and I'm, I'm delighted to be part of that. Thank you. Uh, you talk about a lot of your reflection over the past three decades regarding you know, China development and uh, the good things about China. However, talk about the supply chain definitely calls to play a vital role, and that's what I'm dealing on a daily basis with your supply chain you know, folks. And uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, 
I think a lot of people share the same concern that the cost is going up in China. Although, you know, there's a good, good things about it. However, you know, cost, again, going to be very important. So in your point of view, how, what does it take for China to continue to evolve its advantage in, you know, in the context of rising labor costs and continue yeah. to sustain majority of your supply chain in yeah. China? How can it maintain yeah, its, its supply chain? The, the key for all developing countries is to continually advance. And so the key is advanced manufacturing mm. and to build skills and craftsmen, uh, the, the intersection of craftsmen and programming that can't be replicated or is difficult to replicate. It's bringing the total. Companies that only focus on low cost labor, there are other countries, but that's not our focus. Our focus is quality, making the best, innovation. Those things are at the top of our list. There's one right here. I don't see, the, there, someone's coming right behind you, sir. There you go. Right there, yep. Based on what you said about- I'm sorry, uh, please identify oh, yourself. Oh, sorry, George Yip, Imperial College Business School. Uh, based on what you said about innovation and processes in China, are you worried that this will overtake Apple's advantages in product innovation? Uh, what, what I believe, I, I see it differently than you do. I think you see it as uh, win-lose. What I see is that China is already incredibly innovative in so many areas. And there are uh, apps and business models that could only have been created here. I went to a bike sharing company the last time I was in Beijing. That idea is, could be used in almost every country in the world, but arguably it could only have been created here. The, uh, I went to a uh, company uh, a couple of days ago that has integrated everything from the review of a restaurant to the ordering, uh, to the paying. They've done an unbelievable job to the delivery. Everything in, in one company, I would give them an A+. Uh, I went to a company that is in the e-game space. In addition to publishing and creating games, they run arenas where, and they've created a sport. How many people do you know that's created a sport in their life? <laughs> you know, this is really cool. And they've done it. It could only have been created here. And, and so because a country does well, does it mean another one does badly? I don't subscribe to that. I subscribe to mutual win-win. And, and so from an Apple point of view, we're going to keep doing what we've been doing. We're going to keep innovating. And we know we've got to keep that up to, st to, stay, uh, to stay at the top, and we're going to keep doing it. I see, one back, I see one back there. It's going to have to be a quick question and a quick answer, please. Keith Kroc, chairman of DocuSign. Tim, let me ask you this. In terms of what you see uh, the Chinese government doing in terms of driving the digital transformation uh, for their country, what would you say would be three things maybe that they're doing that uh, would be good for the United States to do that we're not. Thank you, Keith. Um, I think that uh, both countries have a lot to do in this area, is the truth, is that uh, China's very fixated right now, rightfully so, on reform in the state-owned entities. And this is a major task, and uh, all of them could benefit greatly from a digital transformation. The, the U.S., from an e-government point of view, is way behind the um, Singaporean government, the UAE government, et cetera. And so there's great benchmarks out there. Both countries could learn from, from, from that. And so each country, uh, I think, has a number of things that, that they can do in the uh, in the digitization process and probably, you know, both have a long roadmap ahead there. A lot of improvement left. Tim, yep. uh, it's, been a, uh, it's been a privilege for me, and I know it's been a privilege for this entire room. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.